My name is Rick Bush. I'm the product marketing manager here at Festool USA. And today we're gonna to talk about CT dust extractors. All the way from the compact CT CIS to the compact and efficient MIDI series, the 26, the 36, the 36AC auto clean, the CT48, the big boy. And lastly, yes, I brought a little bit of history. We can talk about the CT22. So let's get started. So today's topic is all about dust extractors and dust extraction. And that's a very big topic for us here at Festool. Why? Well, we are the company of dust extraction. We make all of our tools with that as a primary design consideration. So it wasn't adequate for us to have just any old vacuum. In fact, we don't even usually use the word vacuum. We usually say dust extractor because we're talking about something that is made to extract dust as it is created. So as I'm sawing, I'm sanding, I'm routing, I'm getting the dust at the same time. So today we're going to cover a little bit about how we do that and what makes these vacuums extractors and how they're so special. So I thought we'd start off by taking a look at where we've been and why we have today what we have. So if you're at all familiar with Festool vacuums, you know the main principle is about dust extraction, right? And also tool triggered operation. And a lot of that, those existed in a previous generation. Now this unit is uh, out of my personal collection. Uh, it was made in 2008 and it still works today. In fact, I just used it for a project build recently uh, with a community group. So it still has all the same kind of functions and features we've come to love. And you can see when we look at the other machines, how many refinements we've made along the way. The controls on the front will look very familiar. They look like the current models today where you have a simple on off switch. In this case, we have the man or manual position. So the vacuum would run then, or we would go to the automatic where we'd use the tool trigger with the socket on board on the front. And then finally we have the tortoise in the hair, which is our variable suction force control. So that is all still in the front, very much like we see today. After that, you start seeing some departure. So this one's a little bit more decorated than what it would have come with originally. I, I put a hose garage on it, which is an accessory we introduced uh, shortly after these machines had come out. And that allowed me to have a place to store my hose, uh, maybe some cleaning uh, pieces as well as what we had to have back in the day was this pigtail, which adapted you from a 20 amp to a 15 amp. So if we look at the power cord, it came configured as a 20 amp cord ori originally. And so you'd have to put this adapter on, which just plugs together. And the problem is <laughs> you'd have this in the wall and then at some point it gets disconnected and left behind if you're on a job somewhere or another part of a house. And then you had this 20 amp plug you didn't know what to deal with. So that is something that we've changed. Today you'll find it's configured with a 15 amp plug. No more need for an adapter. You'll also find that this hose garage, like I said, it was an accessory that I put on here, was replaced with it. Now it's integrated into the CTs. So this is the, uh, not the original hose from this one, but it is what would have been supplied with it at the time. And this is our standard, what we call 27 millimeter hose. And it has the uh, kind of a universal fitting that goes in the vacuum and then this part that would attach to the tools. This part is rubberized. It has a really great grip on the tools. It has uh, some ribbing on the inside as well as the outside. And with that, we're able to keep the hose very well connected to the machine and to the uh, sander or saw or whatever I'm working with. But the hose garage is a piece that again, I added on. So I'm gonna take it off so we can see what this originally would have looked like without it. So that is how a CT22 was delivered back in the day. Hi, I'm Chris Devlin, product manager at Festool. And for starters, we wanna start with our smallest and most compact dust extractors. Um, you'll see two different models here. This one in front is actually gonna be coming out this fall in October. Uh, the original one is our sustainer-based vacuum. We call it the CT CIS. And you can see, compared to our new regular sustainer, the size comparison. So this is actually, I believe, a 137 in height. So a little bit taller than that, but fully integrates and locks onto the sustainers. And you can see on top here, there's a, there's a hose garage, and then there is the turbine and the filter in the bottom. We'll take a look at that in a second. And these are really meant for uh, quick cleanup, job site cleanup. You're going up and down a ladder, working on a scaffold, getting into tight areas, installing cabinets, and you just need to do a, a little sweep up. When we first came out with this one, I believe it was 2014, one of the uh, complaints slash questions we got right off the bat, not surprisingly, was why not cordless? So you can see this one here, this is a corded dust extractor. Well, happy to announce that as of this fall, we have redesigned and this old one, the corded one will be going away. We'll be moving to a cordless one. 
And so you can see in the back here, it will actually run on two uh, 18 volt, four amp hour batteries. So they go in here side by side, which gives you 36 volts in total. And then inside the dust extractor, you have a roughly one gallon bag in here, a, a fleece bag. And then if we take this out, the filter is actually tucked in here. So it's typical filter you see in all the dust extractors, a little bit on the smaller side. Um, who is this good for? And all of these dust extractors, as we'll talk about next, are, it's all about application. What are you doing? Uh, as I mentioned, it's good for quick cleanup, uh, little tasks. You can actually remove this hose garage if you want to, to make it even more compact. So you can throw the, uh, the arm sling on and, and carry it up, up a ladder, for example. Uh, in this case, you do have three speeds, low, medium, and high. That's the different suction levels that you, you can do. And it is, does come with a Bluetooth remote and is Bluetooth compatible. So you can turn it on and off with a remote, which is really important with a cordless one because it helps you to conserve energy. Next up in our lineup in terms of capacity are all three of these units, the CT15, CT MIDI I, and the newest CTC MIDI. Now I say they're all the same capacity. In fact, if you look from this black area down, it's all about the same height, right? They have the same capacity at 15 liters or 3.96 gallons if you prefer, but they have different features on the head units. First one being a CT15, it has a little bit more stripped down uh, setup. It still includes a hose, but you see it has no hose garage. If we look at the other units, my hose is nice and neat, tucked up inside. This one just stores on the top with a, a, essentially what is a bungee cord. Uh, your hose may look different than ours. This one's gray, now they come in black. So it's gonna be a little bit different, but you do have a little bit of storage on top here. So you can still uh, store the cord and you have a couple of cleaning attachments, a uh, upholstery brush and a cleaning or crevice nozzle. You still have the tool trigger activation as a possibility, plugging the tool in, you turn it on. You can also run it in manual mode. And now you have a digital control for the suction force here. Inside, they use the same filter bags. All, all three units have the same filter bag. They all have the same filter. So the filters up here in the top. The filter bag lays in the bottom. And this is what this is our first time to really talk about. Look at the self-cleaning filter bag. And we'll tell you more about that in a little bit. And then the bottom is different from the others. And it's missing a part here. We have this big green that says on it, stop. That is our parking brake that keeps it from rolling away. So these are engaged right now. They're not rolling off the table for me. This one doesn't have such a brake on it. So CT15 has the same suction force, it has the same capacity, but it's limited in the number of functions. This is the lowest price point of the three machines. So I'll put that one aside. All you also notice on the top, I had no way to store a, a CT. It doesn't have that interface as we called the SysDoc earlier. Now we'll look at the CT MIDI I. Now the I is for Internet of Things or IoT or interconnected, however you want to look at it. What that tells me is it has Bluetooth built in. So if I'm working with one of our cordless tools that has a Bluetooth battery, it can automatically function the CT to run right along with the tool. You still have the ability to plug a tool in, which is the tool triggered operation. You have the digital controls like we saw in the CT15 for the suction force. But now we have a much more elaborate top here. We have a truly a sysdoc. I can latch and put either a classic or T-lock style sustainer. I also have storage inside for the hose. I'm not using a bungee cord on the top, and we also have the power cord inside as well. When I take the head unit off, you'll see it's, it'll be a little harder to tell the difference between this one and the last one. The bag, the filter area look the same. This does have a different function that we didn't see on the CT15, and that's manual hose cleaning. So I can actually use this lever with the hose when it's running. I cap off the hose, run the lever, and it'll cause a differential pressure in there that helps clean out the filter. So that gives you the maximum suction force at all times. So this is a corded unit. You didn't see the power cord, but it was wrapped up inside the top. And as popular as this is, we will now offer a cordless version. So from the front, looks the same, lacking the socket to plug a tool in because this is going to be completely cordless. In the back, if I compare them side by side, you can see we have this little extra bump out, and this is where our batteries go. So I open up the compartment, and you'll see we have two batteries inside. And uh, you can use a variety of capacities. Recommend a big one for the longest uh, runtime. But because we are not with that socket in the front, you're not going to run a power tool directly off of here, but I can still trigger one using the Bluetooth function with one of our Bluetooth batteries. 
So again, the same capacity for these machines, but what we had in corded is now available as a cordless. All right, now we want to take a look at uh, kind of our mid-range dust extractors. Uh, these come in three different sizes. We have a 26 liter, a 36 liter, and one I don't have on the table here is also a 48 liter. Um, these are these are a great all-purpose dust extractor, so they can be used in the shop. They can also be used uh, on the job site. They're still pretty mobile, uh, especially the 26 liter, which is one of our more popular units. As you get up into the 48 liter, those can get pretty heavy. Honestly, if they get if they get full, they get quite heavy. Uh, but as far as features, these have been around for some time. I want to point out a few things that, that Rick mentioned on the other ones. You still have automatic and, and manual here, so you can manually turn the vacuum on or have it tool triggered. There is the, the outlet here as well. Your suction is different. It's not digital in this case, but it's uh, just an analog dial here um, to turn your suction up and down. And you might be wondering, well, when would I want to turn my suction down? Well, typically if you're sanding, for example, uh, you want to actually turn the suction down so you don't have too much down pressure into your workpiece. Uh, one thing that is also interesting to talk about is this, this little plug. So Chris, if you want to pan over here, uh, you'll see this, this plate and your vacuum may have this plate on it. Uh, what that was for originally was we actually had an, an air module and for our air sanders you would put that, you could buy the air module and it would allow your air sander to turn your dust extractor on and off. And funny enough, years and years later, probably 10 years later actually, when we came out with the Bluetooth remote, our engineers figured out a way to use this same little um, module here to be a receiver for the Bluetooth remote. So if you're buying the mini or the new MIDI that has the Bluetooth receiver built in, you just need the remote. If you have an older dust extractor, say one you bought in 2010 through 2018, 19, 20, uh, or even today for that matter, you need this receiver, and so when you buy your Bluetooth remote, you can actually get this receiver as part of a package. Pop out these two screws, put in the receiver, go through the pairing sequence, and now even these, uh, these, these machines, the 26, 36, 48, they can be made uh, to be Bluetooth compatible, both for the remote, but also for the tool-triggered operation. As far as uh, the rest of it, you still have the foot brake. Um, you've got bigger wheels as compared to the other ones, so you'll notice the back wheels are quite a bit larger. Uh, same with the front wheels, they're a lot bigger than what you see on the, on the MIDI and the CT15. Still have your sustainer integration up here on top. You have a hose garage and you also have a cord wrap here in the back. Next up in our lineup is another one of the mid-level size vacuums. We call it the CT36, like you just saw, but with AC on the end. And the AC tells me it's an auto clean, as we also have here in the text, auto clean. So what is this vacuum and what's it for? So although it has the same capacity as a CT36, 36 tells me 36 liters capacity, same thing we have here is 36 liters of capacity. A lot of the same functionality, the tool triggered operation we've mentioned. You have the automatic and manual modes, but if you look at my dial, I have another option here called AC or auto clean. And auto clean is the mechanism inside by which it cleans the filter automatically. So when we looked at the CT MIDI's, they had a manual filter cleaning. This is automatic and it is done already for you inside. So what happens is we have a differential pressure of air in there to help blow the dust out of the filter. We've got some really cool video to show you what that looks like. But if we're looking at the controls in the front, we had the variable suction force. As Chris mentioned, that's to cut down when you don't need so much suction, pulling you maybe a sander close into a surface or you can turn up to maximum when you have some bigger chips or a lot of dust to capture at one time. But there's another dial next to it, which is our AC, which is also variable. You can go from zero, which is basically no auto cleaning function, all the way to maximum, which is going to have the most frequent cycles of that auto cleaning mechanism. So when I pull the head unit off, we'll take a look at where that's located and what it looks like. On the outside, you see this hose is a little different than the others. The others were either gray or green. This one is black and it is a larger diameter hose. This is actually a 36 millimeter hose straight out of the box that comes with this machine. Why is that? Well, because we designed this machine to work specifically with our drywall sanders, what we call the Planex machines. Reason being is they are working in drywall, drywall refinishing, a lot of dust, very high volume of dust, and you wanna be able to move it rather quickly. So we go for a larger diameter hose, and that's also why we have that auto clean mechanism because that filter is going to see a lot more challenge to it. We don't want to lose suction force, so we put an automatic filter cleaning mechanism inside. 
Otherwise, externally, it looks very similar to the other machines. Now, I do have a piece on the top. This is actually to store the uh, drywall sander when you're working with it. If you want to set it down, you can actually store some abrasives inside of it as well. And it's just a handy little docking station is what we call it. And that attaches just by using the T-lock here on the side. So we'll take that off and you can see it's the same uh, hose garage idea. We do have the cord wrap in the back and there's something I have to show you about this cord wrap that I'm particularly fond of. So normally with the cord wrap, and with my old CT22, you have to take the time and do this number, right? Well, this is really cool. All you gotta do is turn this piece right here, and what it does is it breaks away, and now I can pull off all the cord at one time. So it's a much easier way to deploy the cord, and when you're done at the end of the day, yes, you would just go ahead and wind it back up again. So it's just a faster way of getting things set up and ready to go. Now, if you look at the side of the machine, you see I've got like, it looks like a trash bag hanging outside of it. This is actually a containment bag. So if I'm working again in drywall, I'm producing a lot of dust in a short period of time, a standard self-cleaning filter bag will fill up pretty quickly and would have to be disposed. With a bag like this, I get to maximize the use of the space inside. It'll capture all the dust and debris. And again, I can also remove it, cinch it up, and dispose of that dust in a safe way as well. But this helps handle all that finer dust and the higher volume of that dust. Now I'm going to disconnect the hose for a second because I want to show you a couple other things inside. So my hose has this little symbol right here, turned the right way, it's AS. That stands for anti-static. And how does that work on here? Well, when this hose is inserted into the vacuum, it's making contact with this metal piece right here. And that metal piece, which is a few of them here, is grounding out, and that grounds out the machine through the uh, electrical cord that's attached to it. So it actually will ground out to the wall and to the earth from there. So the, everything stays grounded, which is really also very helpful when we're working with drywall dust. It gets very fine dust, sticks to everything. If you ha didn't have the anti-static design, my hose would not only have dust on the outside, I might feel some uh, static discharge, but it would also uh, start clogging up the hose on the inside. So what I wanna show you next, is that auto cleaning mechanism because it's kind of hiding a little bit. So flip the head up. Here's our filter. This is a HEPA filter. And if I pull this out, right behind here is a, what you won't find in the other units, it's a spring loaded piece right here. And that's actuated, this is controlled electronically and electrically activated. And what it does is it helps reverse the flow of air temporarily to blow the dust out of the filter and then down inside uh, the dust chamber. And when I talked about that being an anti-static design as well, here's the contact points that would take that static discharge again running out to the ground. So you can see this is the same filter we used on the other uh, CT26 3648. Um, same kind of housing, same kind of fitment, but we didn't show it to you there, so I'll show it to you now. And that's the CT36 AutoClean or AC.